welcome to Celebration Sunday, everybody. I'm so glad you could be here with us today. It is a virtual Celebration Sunday. We are coming to you from our homes, but it is still Celebration Sunday. And this is one of my favorite days of the year because our students, our Sunday school students, confirmation students, and logo students come together to present a service from start to finish just for you guys. And usually it's months of hard work that go into the service. Uh, but this year is going to be different, although everything's pretty much been different lately. Uh, but our students will still deliver some prayers today, and our confirmation students will deliver the message. Our theme for the year was, you are a piece of God's plan. It's kind of fitting right now, given the fact that everything that's happened with the coronavirus and quarantine and social distancing has been not part of our plan at all but it has been part of God's plan in some way. Um, and we are just very thankful to all be here together, even though we're apart, we're still together. Um, during this time, there's been a lot of disappointment. Um, and especially for our students who have missed out on school and activities and rites of passage and graduations and time with friends. Um, Obviously, the bigger picture here is that over 100,000 Americans have lost their lives uh, and we have prayed for them and their families every Sunday in Sunday school and we will continue to do so. Today, we will not be talking about the theme that we set out in the beginning of the year. Instead, our confirmation students will lead us in a discussion on disappointment, compassion, and strength. Uh, three things that have really resonated in this time of quarantine. So I want you to just sit back and enjoy our virtual Celebration Sunday. Welcome to our virtual Celebration Sunday on behalf of all Sunday School and Logo students. We miss you all. Please pray with me, God. Even though we are not together in person, let us feel connected today in spirit. Let us remember all the wonderful things we have to be thankful for, and let us rejoice. Amen. Now, in silence of your hearts, or out loud, please let lift up those who need prayers. Dear God, thank you for books that bring that brings us into different worlds. Thank you for video games to play, and YouTube for inspiration and laughs. Thank you for walks and snuggling. Thank you for everything. Thank you for letting us know that you are real and always with us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be begun on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Please forgive our debtors and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, everybody. They wanted me to uh, make an appearance here in the midst of uh, Munichburg mayhem. Uh, to see what's going on with the Incredibles. A lot of you guys I know um, are familiar with that uh, movie, both movies, The Incredibles and The Incredibles 2. Oh, you see in the background there, uh, The Underminer. The Underminer is, uh, is one, of the, one of the meanest characters in The Incredibles. He's, uh, he's got three things on his mind. First is to kill The Incredibles. Second is uh, he wants lots of money. And uh, so he robs banks and such. And um, third, he basically wants to destroy uh, any place where there is peace and joy. You see there, you see their dash popping in to try to hold them accountable. And uh, the the thing is, the the Incredibles are going to win the day. They they will because, well, they're incredible. They're strong. And uh, as, I, as I'm watching them, Mr. Incredible there and, and Frozone, who, who uses ice, as you guys know, to, to help control peace and, and bring back joy and happiness. 
So I'm, I'm looking around here. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, a particular verse in scriptures. As things all around me seem to be so, so powerful. There's, uh, there's this verse in scripture that talks about a power that's unlike any power that we know. And um, it's a verse actually from the Old Testament. And the verse goes like this. God, all that is great and powerful and glorious and majestic is yours, O Lord. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and the earth belongs to you. The kingdom belongs to you, O God, and you are the head of it. I love that because it talks to us about how even though we think that there are um, there are other people who are powerful and and strong that there is really only one leader and that that one leader is God but here's the thing this great God has given us great gifts as well gifts so that we can be incredible too we really can and so Today is part of CN Celebration Sunday. Uh, kids, I want to thank you especially for being incredible, for, for bringing the gifts of, of who you are, for letting God um, bring those gifts out and to help other people. I and mean, I pray that as, as you share today, as you talk about um, some of the disappointments that um, really have been hard for you this year, and as, as you think about the strength that you have been able to pull together and, and draw out of yourself and, and uh, look at and experience in other people. And as a result of that, you've been able to show compassion. And I pray that as we, we watch you today and listen to you, that, that we would be able to learn some things about uh, ways that we can be strong, ways that we can be uh, compassionate, ways that we can deal with disappointment in a way that it makes God really happy. And also, I pray that as we, as people of God everywhere, that we would look to those places and those people, those situations where we can be people of peace and strength too. So I love you guys so much. And I just pray that today as, as uh, we watch you be incredible, and um, remember that we are too, that God would somehow make himself felt and known in the midst of the mayhem that we experience on this earth sometimes. I love you guys so much, and um, thanks again. Hope to see you real soon. Take care. Bye. Two Corinthians four sixteen eighteen. Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33, NIV. Okay, so, um, one disappointment I had, um, this year was my Little Mermaid performance that I was doing for Drama Club. But, um, I would, like, go every day and practice with, like, my friends, and we worked really hard on it. But then on opening night they had to cancel it because of coronavirus and, um, social distancing rules. Um, the next thing that got canceled was, like, school. I really have been struggling with, um, online school because it's just not the same. So that was kind of, like, a bummer to get canceled. And I can't see my friends anymore. Uh, the next thing was, I was going to do track this season, but I got canceled. I had already played soccer this season. So I guess there's that, but I was really looking forward to that. And the last thing was scouts. I had write, uh, I'd written a whole scholarship form for it. I was really excited for it, but then they canceled it. So a lot of stuff got canceled for me this year.
but I had to like find out some way to sort of get through it and that was like distracting myself from it and like focusing on different things so like I tried to do basketball so like I could focus on next season so I can play modified and I also would like explore the wilderness and I did merit badge council I um did merit badge classes with my dad and he taught me and my friends like this mer new merit badge called um sustainability which is all about like sustaining the environment and so that like helped me through scouts so I could get my next rank and I've also been um like spending more time with my family which that was kind of good because I could also like usually when I was at school I usually went did like a seven hour day at school and then went straight to drama or scouts now I can actually spend more time with my family so there's that so yeah there's been a lot of disappointments this year but there's also some good things that have come out of it today I'm going to be talking about strength the Bible talks about strength in 1st Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 here's what it says God purposely chose what the world considered nonsense in order to shame the wise and he chose what the world considered weak in order to shame the powerful. The Bible also talks about strength in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7-10. through 10. Here's what it says. But to keep me from being puffed up with pride because of the many wonderful things I saw, I was given a painful physical ailment, which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, My grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. These Bible verses show that we can depend on God's strength, knowing that his power is evident when we are weak. Here's a story about the power of God's strength. It's from my mentor this year, Mrs. Yowzi. Here's what she told me. I went through a divorce and my mother died in the same year. I felt God's strength at the time more than ever because I didn't have any of my own. My son Parker was two years old, so I had to be there for him, and God gave me the strength. God gave me great people who came alongside me to help. I read my Bible and listened to Christian music to stay close to him and felt his strength. My faith grew a lot during that time. Isn't that an inspirational story? Now I want to talk about myself for a little bit. The time when I needed God's strength was when I broke my wrist last year. I remember there were only a few doctors on staff that night, so I had to wait four to five hours with only an ice pack to ease the pain. I broke my left wrist too, which is unfortunate for me because I write with my left hand. I had to learn to do everything right-handed, from eating to writing. I always knew that God's strength was there though, however. So in turn, I felt strong during that hard time. Now I'm going to talk about a more recent example of needing God's strength. Over the past few months, I've had to depend on God's strength more than ever. When we first started quarantine, I was very sad and disappointed. All I could think about was the things I was missing out on and what I would be doing if I wasn't stuck at home. I was especially sad about not getting to go to Canada for my birthday. I felt that my year was stuck on hold. However, I later realized that I could turn to God for strength when I am weak. And so I did. I came out of my slump and learned to appreciate the things that I did have while stuck at home. One of those being time, and a lot of it too. My family decided to redo the basement, which is a long and vigorous process. We wouldn't have been able to do that if we weren't stuck at home. Another thing I had more time to do is bake. 
I spent a week making different types of cookies, because why not? I have also come to appreciate my family more, too. Before quarantine, it seemed like I barely saw them. We all came home at different times and ate at different times. Now I see them every day. We have family board game night sometimes and try and eat dinner together. When we redid the basement, we found an old Pac-Man arcade game. One day, I spent the morning playing it with my brother. God's strength has in turn made me strong. I know when I look back on this time, I'll be thankful for what it's taught me. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Bye. Compassion. We all have our own take on what compassion is. It can be the kindness of helping those by fulfilling a need. But right now, when everyone seems so frightened and all sorts of things are not the way they used to be, you'd think compassion would be fading. People would have become more selfish. You'd have been right for about the first month or so. This was all rightfully understood, though. Everyone was in panic. Everyone was wondering, how will this end? Will scientists be able to prevent it from continuing? How badly will we sink before recovering? But now that as we are reaching the other side of this mountain, it's began to change. There have become more moments of community, more moments of compassion. Earlier today, I talked to Sam Dance about this, because he's my um, mentor for confirmation. And I asked him if he had any ideas for compassion. What was funny is I had already written it out, and I was just planning to add in something about Sam's. What I didn't know is Sam would give me the same idea I had already used about schools and how schools have been oh so compassionate during this time. Now I'm going to throw out a couple of those examples. Sam's is going to be first here. Sam said to me, one of the things that he finds oh so compassionate with teachers was how they notice those that go unnoticed, how they help those in need, how they push those that are not doing so well to become better. I'm going to also be talking about the teachers here to start with how stressful those first couple months were. For not just the kids, but those teachers. They had to make daily lessons. They had to look over their lessons. They had to put out the lessons. They had to do a Google Meet. They had to then turn around at the end of the day and grade all those papers. It was just very, very stressful for both sides of this. And then schools started talking to teachers and saying, you can lighten up on the workload. You can make it a weekly thing. You can make it a couple days a week kind of thing, which was the school f f taking away that stress that was keeping everyone so occupied. Another thing that's been super compassionate that I've scene was this year's graduating seniors. They were in this panic frenzy of, wait, what's going to happen? Are we going to have a graduation? Are we going to be rewarded for our 13-year commitment of school? Many things have happened for those people now. They've gotten signs in their front yards. There's been 
schools have put on little sidewalk parades. And I know my school did a little gift bag for them with all sorts of school merchandise and stuff. And gift cards. The big, this big spiel of different stories of schools being compassionate and teachers being also compassionate. Typically on Celebration Sunday, I get a chance to thank my Sunday school teachers and my Logos volunteers for their hard work and dedication during the course of the year. I love you guys. I'm so thankful for every single one of you. And as soon as we can be together, you'll get your proper thank you. Um, but I just wanted to give a shout out to all my teachers, uh, Luann, uh, Tara, Karen, Maggie, Dan, Kathy, thank you so much for all your hard work this year in Sunday school. Uh, we've had we had a lot of good times um, and a lot of fun times, and I know the kids really enjoyed every moment with you. Uh, as for logos, um, Kermit, Liz, Tara, Megan, Pastor Bob, uh, we had a dream team this year and a huge group of students, and it was just. It was just fun. Every night was fun and and every night was special and it's sad that we got cut short, but hopefully we can bring all that energy that we had in February and bring it back uh, as soon as we can gather again um, next year. Thank you all. You are all in my prayers and I cannot wait till we can be together again. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who dwells in you, has something he wants to do through you, where you are. Believe this, and go, in his love, and in his power, and in his grace, this day, and all of your days, now, and forevermore. Amen.